Hello lads, how are we doing? Welcome back to UFC London Fight Week daily videos. How are we doing? Today we will be doing our predictions and breakdown for the card ourselves. Sonny uploaded it here yesterday and we reacted to it. That video's actually just gone out. So if you could go and support that video boys, uh, just yeah, go give it a watch. I would say I'd leave it linked in the description, but I'm not. So go watch it boys. Just click on the channel and it will be there. Like, come on, don't make me put it in the description. Anyway, uh, we're going to be breaking down the fight except these two here. Because I don't know much about it. I know about Dolby. I don't know much about the rest of them. We're going to start with Jai Herbert versus Kyle Nelson. Jai Herbert. The, what's it? The Black Country Banger. Um, He'll be taking on Kyle Nelson. Now, Jai is coming off the knockout loss to Elite Poria. Uh, Jai is 1 in 3 in the UFC, but he has 3 knockdowns. Like, that is mad to think about. Uh, he had, he, his losses, though, Hinata Moicana, uh, Elia Taporia, Tronado. He was beating Tronado as well. He was beating uh, Elia Taporia, but he got overconfident, and then, yeah. Uh, but he does have a win against Kyle Worthy, I believe. Kyle Nelson. Now. Jai Herbert's a big favourite, and I can see why, because he's a, he's a great fighter. He's just susceptible to being like overexcited sometimes when he does catch his opponents and like coasting to a victory. Then bang, he gets caught. Uh, but Carl Nelson, featherweight. Oh, he's coming up. He's coming up. Unless his fight is at featherweight, I'm guessing it's not because Jai Herbert is six foot one. Uh, KO lost to Billy Quarantine. So it's his first fight in like two years. Okay. We're going to go with the Black Country and Banger on this one, boys. And yeah, getting back in the win column, getting back on the road. He's probably never going to be like a champion or a top 15 like, or anything like that, but Jai's a very exciting fighter to watch. So I can't wait to see him put on a performance. Mohamed Makayev, I think that's how you pronounce it, Makayev, versus Charles Johnson. I have no clue anything about Charles Johnson. Mikhaev had like 30 amateur fights, undefeated as a pro, had like that perfect debut, got like a flying knee knockdown, uh, wrapped up the guillotine, and then he got it against uh, Cody Duran. Is that his name? He recently won against JP Bai, who got like one of the worst chins of all time. Um, but we're going to go with Mikhaev in this one because the man is just absolutely phenomenal, boys. We definitely have locked in another English uh, champion right here. Lads, you probably won't catch me awake for this fight, I can't lie. <laughs> Amir Khani versus JSP. Oh my god, JSP's last fight, oh, it's boring. It was boring. He can be exciting sometimes, but like, look at this, right? Jonathan Pierce. Let's look at the stats for his last fight. Alright, here we go, right? Look at that, nine strikes landed to the head. It's Christian Rodriguez, who I believe it was his like, UFC debut on short notice. 11 minutes of control time, six takedowns, didn't do like much with it, as you can see there. Christian Rodriguez ha did have some success on the feet, uh, but I'm gonna go JSP. Because I believe this kind of could be kind of like a passing of the guard, even though Amir Khani was never anything like special. But he's been like a veteran in the UFC. He's had some all right wins, such as okay, lads. I can't lie. His notable wins aren't that great, uh, to be honest. I mean, he's fought the likes of Edson Barboza, Shane Burgos, Arnold Lavin. Uh But he's he's lost. He's lost all of them. Mike Grundy's an impressive win, to be fair, and that one was quite quick as well. So, like Mike Grundy shut in. Uh, he wrapped up the guillotine, and yeah, well, I'm gonna go JSP on this one. Nathaniel Wood versus Charles Rosa. Now this is Nathaniel Wood's debut at 145. I believe he's moving up to 45 so he can be more active uh, because he hasn't fought in a while and he wants to like fight a lot more. Um, minus 500 favorite. Wow, that is a lot. I believe Charles Rosa's last fight was at lightweight uh, and he lost it. Or TJ Brown, that must be yeah. Uh, I believe he just got controlled. I can't lie. I think he just got controlled. Um, but we're going to go and find your wood. It's going to be a clean sweep for the English boys. Uh, that may be spoiling my predictions a bit, but it's going to be a clean sweep. Uh, Mark Casey versus Hadzovic. Uh, Mark Casey had an impressive performance last time against uh, that Santa Claus man. Uh, not actual Santa. 
he does not fight in the octagon that late. Uh, he trains with your favourite uh, alpha man. What's his name? Like, it begins with B. I couldn't tell you. But uh, Mark J. Casey, he secured like 10 takedowns in that fight. Showed the improvements in the wrestling. Didn't do much with those takedowns. Um, but yeah, Daz, Damir Han, Hanzovic is coming off the win, I believe, to Yancy Medeiros. Now, boys, clean sweep for the English. Mark J. Casey by decision. Mason Jones versus Lud Ludovic Klein. This is a controversial opinion for me, lads. I don't think Mason Jones is that special. Like, he won't be champion. But I just don't. I mean, he could prove me wrong here. He just, like, in the UFC, hasn't had that performance yet to, like, break through and be like to everyone, yeah, I'm here to stay. I am UFC quality. He had an impressive win. David Onama is his only win in the UFC. Alright. David Onama exposed a lot of holes in Mason Jones' stand up. And that was to a featherweight. Like, he was getting wobbled every time the feet. Look, every time the feet? Every time the fight was on the feet, David Onama was wobbling out. Uh, so, Ludwig Klein, he last fought, I believe, at, I want to say 272, and he looked really good there. But I'm still going to go to Mason Jones. Uh, by, like, grappling. Just, it'll just sit on him for three rounds. That's what it'll do. I, I do hope he does well, though, Mason Jones. Like, I will support him if he starts doing well. Like, I really support Jack Shaw as one of the Welsh fighters. Sad to see what happened to him, by the way. Why am I saying that like he died? No, he didn't die, he just lost for the first time. We're on to the main card now, boys and girls. Uh, we have got Paul Krieg versus Volkan Uzdemir. I believe Volkan Uzdemir's last win was against Rakic, if I am correct. Paul Krieg's last win was against Nikita Krylov. Uh, by the way, lads, why is Paul Krieg and Uzdemir below Krylov Gustafsson? They're both ranked higher, and Paul Krieg just beat him. So, just be cried off, so yeah, I don't understand uh, what's up with that one. Vulcan Uzdemir, they've just got to avoid the, the arm bar and the takedowns. Because if this is a stand-up fight, Uzdemir wins. But he's not going to win, because Paul Craig's going to win. Molly McCann versus Hannah Goldie. Hannah Goldie's 1-2 and two in the UFC, right? Molly McCann's on like a 2 fight win streak now. I think uh, the UFC are just trying to build her up a bit more. Um, yeah, Hannah Goldie, when I went to do like research on her, uh, her win, who was it again? It was a submission, um, I believe. But I just like, I look to see if like if she goes for leg kicks a lot more, if she goes for like if she targets one area more, and she mixes it up quite a bit. That's what I noticed. So, Molly McCann is a big headhunter. She's a big head headhunter. Like you see her fights, she's trying to she's trying to knock you up with the hands, but she just doesn't have like the power to do that. And she caught Carolina with a spinning elbow. That was beautiful. But I think, wait, Hannah Goldie is this her debut at 25? Oh, I didn't look out for that. I can't even lie. Um. But this is the one rare occasion where you'll see Molly McCann with a reach advantage. You'd never thought you'd see the day. Uh, but Molly McCann does win this one by decision. Probably like 30-25 quite easy. Bish, bash, bosh. Alright lads. Nikita Krylov versus Gustafsson. I'm excited to see Gustafsson back at 205. Back against contenders. Krylov hasn't had the best run recently. Uh, since coming back to the UFC, I believe he's like two and four. Uh, with wins over like Johnny Walker, uh, I can't remember who the other one is, but he's lost to people like Paul Craig, he's lost to uh, Ankoliev, and is OSP one of them, or did he beat OSP? <laughs> His name is The Miner. Oh god. Don't be surprised if Pat Barry is near your locker room before the fight. Uh, he, oh, he beat OSP. He lost to Teixeira by split decision, to be fair. And then, yeah, beat Walker by unanimous decision. That is pretty much like very heavy wrestling style approach in that one. Paul Craig and Anchor Life. Uh, I'm actually going to go Gustafsson in this one, you know, lads. He looked alright before he got submitted against Badu. 
Um, but yeah, I just, I really want Gustafsson to win. I just really want to see him back in the win column again. He's on a free fight losing streak uh, to Jones, Smith, Anthony Smith, and Verdun. All finishes, all finishes. Um, but yeah, boys, I'm going to go Gustafsson. Paddy the Baddy versus that American that twerks. He's got a weird body, only that Jordan Levitt. Uh, when I did research on Jordan Levitt, one thing I picked out, leg kick heavy approach. Leg kick heavy approach. I believe Paddy will have the advantage on the feet. Uh, Jordan will have a bit of one on the ground, even though like Jordan's all right on the feet as well. Paddy's, all, Paddy's really good on the ground. Very tricky. Um, I'm I'm going to wedge Paddy in this one, lads. I just don't know enough about Jordan Levitt. I mean, we'll see come fight now who wins this one. Uh, will the Monkey King win it? I believe that's his name, Monkey King. Or will the Baddy win it? I'm going to go with the Baddy. Minus 260. Is that for a reason or is that just because he's got a lot of hype in it? Oh, lads. Chris Curtis. The way he fights is just so sad. Like his last fight against Rodolfo Vieira. Those body shots were just... Oh, they were beautiful. I think he can keep the fight standing against Hamanson. The takedown defense he showed against Vieira was absolutely phenomenal. And if it's a stand-up fight, Chris Curtis's boxing will outbox like Hamanson's boxing. But Hamanson's stand-up has improved. He didn't look bad against Sean Strickland. It was a split decision, but that was Sol DMR. So how do you say it in not an American accent like John Alex, is it? Sol DMR toe? I don't know. Uh, but Chris Curtis wins this one by decision. How it hit first, gets his name in the top 15. It's just a shame it's not Darren Till, boys. It's just a shame. Main event, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. I'm going to go with the clean sweep for the English. Sonny uploads will be wrong. Tom Aspinall will win this one. Curtis Blades is a wrestler with no submissions, right? A lot of people are expecting Curtis to try and take this to the ground. Including Tom. I think Curtis is going to try and keep the stand in and throw Tom off it uh, like he did with uh, Chris Dorcas. But I believe I believe it's quite close on the feet, quite close on the ground. I'd, I'd say Curtis has a power advantage, Tom has a speed advantage. Uh, when you're finishing the fight on the ground, I'd say Tom has an advantage. Uh, because he's he's got very good jiu-jitsu, his dad's been teaching him it from like very young age. So I'm going to go Thomas on this one by submission. Curtis has never been submitted before. I think he does for the first time on the 23rd of July. Anyway, boys, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, smash a like and subscribe. And I'll see you another time. Bye.